Democritus is where we should begin. His is the lesson of how we might use our minds to reason what is concealed from us. Though we are ourselves in the middle of things, the truth of Democritus's fragments and of our long struggle against its truth as we try to assemble our own truths provides a glimpse into the struggle of our body and our spirit and our relationality. I use the word our so as to realize Jean-Luc Nancy's singular plural, for if Democritus is right, to be embodied is to have already realized the singular plural. When we do the work of knowing, doing, and making, we never do it alone. Even in the liminal spaces of birth and death, we are never alone. As Sixu says, millions of signs rain down, and in their flood, they stick to one another. They kiss. These atomy, Epicurus tells us, are prone to clinamin, to swerve. We are inclined towards the other, and the other to us, each to one another. This clinamin is a problem for readers of Epicurus in that we must now ask ourselves, why does it all come together? Is it in our spirit to swerve? And what makes the spirit swerve? Memorial Stadium resides at the bottom of a rut on the Clemson University campus. Call it a drainage basin, its upper watershed. This high seminary of learning, as founder Thomas Green Clemson referred to it in his will bequeathing his inherited land to the state of South Carolina for the purposes of establishing a college. It's learning, unlearning, anti-learning, justice, injustice, equality, inequality, washes down the slope and onto the field of play. This upper watershed extends to a high hill that rises above the southern stands, and on this high hill resides a cemetery, one that predates the playing of football on this property. On this high hill are, in fact, two cemeteries. One is concealed, while the other is not. The one we can see is well-maintained, orderly, laid out in terraces, of either pink marble or soft gray granite, partitioning off fine, high, mossy gravestones on which the names of white men are carefully inscribed. Some of the white men buried in this hillside were faculty members of the college. Others were slaveholders or members of those families who have profited by that horror. Adjacent to the cemetery but lower down the hill is the other cemetery, the concealed one, a triangular piece of property where thick red oak trees have grown into a dense copse. And on Clemson game day, many a drunken tailgater will pass through the wood on their way to the stadium, some stopping to relieve themselves as revelers will do. To a degree, these tailgaters must be pardoned for this copse appears as copses do, wild, forgotten. In this other cemetery, there is no ornament, no border to separate the living from the dead, nor stones offering requiem. The field stones the tailgaters trample, the dirt they scatter, lies above the graves of the slaves who worked John C. Calhoun's plantation home what is now Clemson University. John C. Calhoun, Vice President, Secretary of State, Secretary of War, Senator, Congressman, author of a disquisition on government. And that unsettled cemetery dirt and 
all that may be unsettled by the practice of fancy learning at the high seminary washes down the slope and on to the field of play. Here, on this field, on this bottom, the runoff settles into till.